All right, Space Coast can go here. Michael Myers can go here. Okay, whatever broke, it wasn't me this time. I didn't do it, I did it. Ooh. Hello. It's a glass pen. Cool, I'm gonna try this out. I still didn't do it. Today is a very special video because instead of looking over a specific ink or a specific inking supplies, instead we'll be looking at glass pens. Now I actually have two for us to check out today. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with what a glass pen is, it's actually a dip pen but made entirely out of glass. The nibs aren't changeable and there's a few benefits that a glass pen would have over a dip pen. Now I actually heard about glass pens not from Jazza, not from Drawing with Waffles, and not from ZHZ. I actually found out about them from my girlfriend Sarah Apple. She picked one up and loved it until it broke and she recommended it to me. So I decided to pick one up for myself. So let's open these bad boys up. Now this is the Golden Right hand blown glass dip pen and this retails for about $10.99 or $11.99 on Amazon. And this one is actually the hand glass pen and this one retails for about $3 to $5.99. So these are both very different price ranges. You can see you get a little bit more with this one. Opening it up, you can see it's a beautiful glass pen. Like this looks gorgeous. It's a beautiful shade of red. Absolutely love it. They also had different colors too. And then one thing you're gonna notice is that the nib is significantly larger compared to our normal dip pens and on top of that it doesn't come off this is not a switchable nib pen which is very interesting to me this one also comes with a teeny tiny little thing of ink which is adorable and it comes with this little pen rest you can actually put this down on the ground and stick your pen there and it can rest there super nice i don't see myself using this now let's take a look at this one over here opening it up and it's a magic wand seriously this this is a magic wand it has a little covering which i do like and this one has the same exact head as our other one however you can see the the body is very different so from what I can tell most glass pens will have the exact same nib very interesting and again this is non removable so now I want to compare these real quick to the normal dip pens that we use on the channel this is a cheap speedball dip pen this is their standard one you can see very different you're gonna have obviously a plastic body but on top of that you have a metal nib that you can interchange here's another dip pen we have this one is the first dip pen I had that was not speedball this is actually a manga dip pen that can take both nibs and then here's the standard speedball quill nib. In fact, I believe this is the only quill pen they actually make. There are huge differences with how these work. Because this is glass, it's not as flexible, so you're not going to have as much variation in line with. However, you can see that these have more grooves in them, so that leads me to believe that this will actually be able to hold more ink, which is very exciting. I can't wait to test these. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to test them first with the ink included, and then we're going to break out my favorite ink, the FW Acrylic Ink. And I want to compare and contrast them to our dip and quill pens, because I think that'd be really cool to see the differences between the two. But of course, we're going to need our Batman sketchbook. Oh wait, there's safety. Very nice. Oh, we're still going. Just as I thought. Look at that. This is all one line. Oh wow, that's cool. It feels very different. Like it feels less flexible. Definitely feels harder and sturdier. Okay, we're done. Look at how long that line is. That is crazy. Definitely did not get some line variations. A little bit on the pigment drop, but I'm not going to judge the ink that this came with. We're just going to use it to test it. But just as I thought, all those little ridges and rims are actually holding on to the ink more, allowing you to actually make longer lines. That's really cool. Let's get another dip and then let's just the nib quality. So like I said, definitely feels a lot more sturdy, not as flexible, so we're not going to get some line variation. But this is still very nice. The lines are super consistent, almost like a ballpoint pen consistent. This is very nice. Now I can see some benefits about this right away. Definitely see straight off the bat, we are going to be able to have such consistent line that this would be great for robots or backgrounds, especially if you're doing like a city background. This would be phenomenal. What I want to do now is is draw one line and compare that to our dip pen and our quill pen. So if you compare our line test, it's pretty clear that the glass pen, as suspected before, was able to literally run circles around our normal dip pens. The fact that it can keep going for so long is extremely impressive. There are some other disadvantages. While it was able to keep going for a long time, that unflexibility really shined in our simple line weight 
shape test. Here you can see with the glass pen, there is no line variation, which I suspected and we saw from our previous doodling. However, our dip pen was able to have a lot more variation. As you can see, the middle part here is much thicker. That's important in an illustration because that can help give a sense of depth, weight, and character in your artwork. That's why quill pens and dip pens are still used in traditional comic book artwork and traditional illustration to this day. The quill pen was even able to do the same thing. It's because of their flexible nature, the fact that you can have this open and close to get that line variation, and turning it too will also change how the line works. On top of that, a normal dip pen actually can be switched out and have different nibs, but with the glass pen, you're limited to the one nib. Now, I talked earlier about where I could see this being beneficial, but overall, I do think that the positives do outweigh the negatives. However, I'm still very curious to see how this is going to interact with different inks, because we've only been using the ink that was included with the glass pen. I want to see how this will work with my favorite ink, the FW Acrylic Ink. So here's our acrylic ink. Now we know how this works. We've used it before in the past. It is my favorite ink, but we're going to just do a control test with our normal dip pen just so we see how the line works. Okay, there we go. I know our lines will be different, but I just want to see what our actual glass pen will be able to do to see, you know, if it's going to have any flow issues, any problems. That's not bad. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is a heavier ink, so it's not flowing. Let's try using this with a different ink, actually, because we're not getting the same results we got with its normal ink. Okay, guys, so I did a few more tests, and I found that all of these inks do not work with these dip pens. I don't know why. But do you know what ink does work? This one. This is the Calligraphy Ink by the Manuscript Pen Company, made in Great Britain. This ink works phenomenally well with these pens. In fact, this beautiful line right here was done with this ink, and it's the only one that stayed consistent outside of the little tiny bottle of ink that was included. Since I have not filmed a review for this ink, expect most of the B footage from this review to be in the review for this ink because it was the only one that worked and we're gonna put this pen to the ultimate test with an illustration. So, well that super time lapse. I also need time to clean up because I've, I've made a mess in my desk, so let, let's also do that. But super time lapse first. Inking this piece was extremely enjoyable. I thought the odd shape of the pen may be uncomfortable over a long period of time, but that was definitely not the case. I also thought the lack of flexibility in the nib may pose a problem, but it never did, and I never broke the nib too, or felt like I was putting too much stress on it. Also during this piece, I decided not to actually do any washes, as I wanted to focus mostly on the line work itself. I did break out a brush to fill in the areas of black, but it is worth noting that the pen itself is really good at filling in small areas, so in small areas where I could, I did use the pen. Cross hatching with this was extremely enjoyable. I was actually surprised by how much I enjoyed the cross hatching. I've learned that I really enjoy cross hatching with flexible nibs and this one being not flexible at all I thought it would be more tedious but no the cross hatching was very enjoyable. This illustration really did highlight the benefits of the glass pen. The consistent line work makes drawing inorganic items super enjoyable and makes them look more solid and real in ways that normal dip pens may struggle in. On top of that I also like the fact that I was dipping much less into the ink well than I normally would though there were some times where that wasn't the case. Overall I can definitely tell that I did not dip into my ink well nearly as much as I would with my normal dip pen. This was also my first time using the ink and I noticed how smudgy it was. I decided to keep it because it helped add to that grimy look that I wasn't going for, but slowly started to develop. This quickly became one of my favorite and most moody pieces I've done this year. It was one of the few pieces that I actually gave a name to, one that has meaning. The name of this piece is I'm Not Done With You Yet, and it's up to interpretation to you guys. Do you think that it's Marco, the host of Wrath, saying it, or do you think it's Wrath himself saying that to Marco? That is up to you to decide. And we're done, guys. I absolutely love how this piece came out. Very moody, very stylized, a little bit of symbology in there. And on top of that, it is also up to interpretation. So a little bit of everything good art should be. And as always, it's available on my art station account for a $1 digital download. It's that first link in the description down below. I have to say that inking with these pens were very fun. And even though I thoroughly enjoyed the process, there were definitely were some limitations, but some positive to using them. The line width being super consistent makes it very easy to illustrate backgrounds, cities, and robots. But for more organic shapes, definitely lacking in a few areas and on top of that it is very picky with the ink. I'm actually surprised that this was the ink it worked with and I wasn't expecting to have it be so picky. I did shake the inks beforehand and they still didn't work so that is something to keep in mind but this is a piece that I'm definitely going to keep in my artistic toolbox. So if you guys have not tried a glass dip pen I heavily recommend it. You could find them for extremely cheap prices on Amazon. Ten to three dollars. It's definitely worth the investment to try it out and you may like it and find it's 
its benefits that I've been talking about. Now this is knowing why I would rate the artistic tool or ink. With this just being a general overview of glass pens, I don't see that necessary. I would definitely rate this specific glass pen as a 9. Very nice quality, very sturdy, looks absolutely beautiful and it was a joy to use. Same thing with this one. But with that said, I'd like to hear your guys' opinions on glass pens. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Have you used them in the past? All that fun jazz and on top of that, some constructive criticism on the artwork. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What are some of the areas that you think I could have improved on? But with all that said, remember, I'm J-Rod at Balfour Productions. I draw a power and my own soul and I ain't gonna shatter anytime soon.